Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Microsoft's Universal File Explorer for Windows 10. Now this has been part of Windows 10 for quite a while at this point. It was first introduced on Windows 10 Mobile back in 2015 before coming to Xbox in 2017 and HoloLens in 2018. Um, Microsoft started bundling it with desktop in a hidden state uh, with the creators updates in 2017, which was kind of interesting. Uh, it was never on by default. It was never available to the user. It's just within the OS, but hidden and you can enable it by creating a shortcut and typing in a long thing which if you want to do you can check down below uh, I'll have instructions on how to do it uh, but the app itself has never really been touched once it was first introduced on Windows 10 Mobile minus a few minor updates here and there nothing was really added to it there was no new features or enhancements made to the app itself it just found itself on more and more versions of Windows 10 uh, but with version 1809 that changes for the first time ever i believe microsoft has added new features to its universal file explorer so before we actually take a look at it let's take a look at the universal file explorer in version 1803 and previous so this is what the file explorer has been up until basically 1809 where microsoft started adding new stuff to it so this was the app before and uh, it was a very basic file manager and that's kind of the point this app was never really intended for desktop use it was always for devices with touchscreens or controllers where you wouldn't normally be doing much file management anyway. So let's see here, if we go into a folder, we can double click like normal. You'll get obviously your files and stuff. Right click context menu on a file and you get a bunch of different options such as delete, move to, copy to, share, rename and properties. The properties area is kind of basic, but it does the job for your basic information there. Um, we can also copy and move to, but these are very sort of weird systems. So it's not like just copy slash paste. You have to move or copy directly to the directory that you want to move or copy to. So for example, if I want to move this uh, image into save pictures, I can't just drag it in there. I have to right click, select move to, select the folder and then press OK. And that will move it into there like that. If I want to move it back out, I have to do that again except go backwards one and press OK. So it's a very clunky experience, but this is because it was, again, designed for touchscreens, where doing that step by step would be easier than having to do a drag and drop motion, especially on small screens such as phones, where there's not much room to drag things around anyway. Uh, same goes for the copy thing. It's the exact same process. So if I want to copy this into this folder, I press OK. And now I have two versions of that file, one in the camera roll, the other in the pictures folder. Now it is a file explorer, so I can double click to open up the file and it will launch me into the appropriate program to open that file. But it only works on some file types such as images and Word documents and normal text documents. If I come back out here and go to documents, you see I have a WordPad doc here, which will open up in WordPad just like you would expect. However, the app never really did anything else. I can't open up EXEs, for example. So if I want to set up Spotify here, the program won't know how to launch the file. Now, other notable things in this version is that the UI is at the bottom of the app. Again, this is likely due to touch screens on mobiles. It's easier to reach the bottom than the top most of the time. So the buttons for lots of these controls were down here at the bottom instead of the top. Now, context menu support is very iffy in this version of the file explorer. If I have a file copy to my clipboard, I can't just use control C, control V to handle that within the file explorer. I can't right click and select paste. That's not really possible. Again, the only way to copy and paste things is to use this copy to function, which is a very manual process and it's a one step thing. Uh, you can create new folders though, which coming down here to do so, and that will allow you to create a new folder. These buttons here themselves actually have a bunch of different options. Select. Uh, new folder, icon, search, properties, select all and refresh. But other than that, that's pretty much it. There wasn't any really contextual right click context menus. Every file had the same right click menu and stuff. And it was a very basic app. And that's for what it was, that was okay. Again, this wasn't ever intended for desktop use. It was always for mobile, Xbox, HoloLens versions of Windows that were locked down and as such didn't really need to do much. But with 1809, things are starting to change. So let's switch over to 1809 now and take a look at the Universal File Explorer again and see some of the improvements Microsoft has started to make. So here we are in version 1809. If we jump back into the Universal File Explorer, you'll see a couple of things have already changed from the get-go. The first of which, those buttons at the bottom of the app are now at the top of the app, and there's a new dedicated paste button within those buttons. So yes, putting the buttons at the top of the window make a lot more sense on devices where touch isn't a primary input, or at the very least on a device where the screen isn't a phone size. Put them at the top, it's kind of mimicking the legacy file explorer where people expect these functions to be. Um, not only that, if we jump into a folder here, 
Um, the copy paste system is now much more like the legacy file explorer. No longer am I thrown into a dedicated um, copy paste UI. I just have to right click and select copy. And now that's copied to my clipboard. I can just navigate through the uh, file explorer like you would expect to be able to do. Right click in an empty space and press paste. That's a much better way of doing things. It's just like the Legacy File Explorer. It's no longer using this dedicated manual step-by-step -step process. It's a much more intuitive way of doing it, especially with a keyboard and mouse. There's also a new cut option. So I can cut this, which will then cut this file from this di uh, directory and I can move this somewhere else. So if we jump into our documents here, I can paste that in here. And now that file has been moved into uh, this folder instead. Not only that, if we right click on a file here, a photo at least, you now have an option to set as background. So my background currently is, uh, you know, the standard Windows one. If I set as background, my wallpaper changes just like you would expect. So yeah, these context menus are now a little bit more contextual, at least in regards to photos. Uh, hopefully that will improve down the line with more contextual stuff for specific file types. But for now, photos are recognized as photos that can be set as a background and you can right click to do that straight from within the modern file explorer. Now, another noteworthy change is drag and drop support. In the previous version to move something, I had to right click, select move. But now, just like Legacy File Explorer, I can just drag it over to where I want it and I'll move that into there. And that also means I can now drag files in and out of the uh, file explorer as well. In the previous version, you couldn't do that because drag and drop simply didn't exist. But I can now drag this file out to the desktop if I want to. Let's move it there. And then I can also move it back if I so please, just like you would expect to be able to do with any file explorer. The previous version didn't allow that uh, capability because it was sort of isolated in its own window. It didn't support drag and drop and as such, it wasn't possible. So obviously it's still a very basic app. It's still not feature filled. It's definitely not up to uh, scratch compared to the Legacy File Explorer, for example. Um, there are no plans to replace the Legacy File Explorer on desktop anytime soon with this version. So uh, those of you worrying about that can relax. Uh, but it is a sign that Microsoft is starting to pay attention to its Universal File Explorer. Again, up until now, they hadn't really added anything to it. So for the first time ever in version 8 and 9, the Universal File Explorer has received a couple of new additions. So that must mean Microsoft has a plan for this app. And I believe it's all because of Windows Core OS. On Windows Core OS devices, this will be the the primary file explorer. There is still a lot more work to do. I am told that more and more features are expected to be added to this app over time. Uh, but for now, this is an early look at the sort of groundwork Microsoft is laying for this app in the future. The drag and drop support, right click, better right click context menus, all that good stuff. Uh, it's a great start. It's a you know, this app is three years old at this point, so it is slow progress, but um, I don't believe they actually started adding stuff to it until earlier this year. So so it's great that they finally started paying attention to it, but um, we'll have to see where things go. But for now, that's a quick look at the updated File Explorer, Universal File Explorer at least, in version 1809. Um, of course, like I said, this is off by default. There's This isn't replacing Legacy File Explorer. Legacy File Explorer is still here and on by default. So again, don't worry about that. It's not going away. Uh, but yes, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.